Okay guys, I'm back with lesson two. So if you watched my first video, I showed you how to crochet a chain. And um, so I wanna talk a little bit about that. If you got your chain to be uniform, then you're ready to move on to a slip stitch and a crochet, single crochet. So here's the slip stitch and the single crochet. See the abbreviation? When you see these in a pattern, you're gonna see them this way. And so this is the yarn over, and then you've got a chain as a CH. So you got yarn over and then the chain, CH, and then you've got the slip stitch and the single crochet. So if you've got your chain to a uniform, all your stitches are uniform, then let's talk about this chain. You've got a V for each stitch. So for each chain, there is a V. So if you were to go through both of those, it would be there. So you got both, see the two different V. So this, you turn your work and you start going the other direction. So this would be the front loop and this would be the back loop. You got the front loop and back loop. Now back here is the back bump, is what some people call it. And there's one for each stitch, just the same as there is the V. If you're going to work into this, then you're gonna end up with having this as your, um, the bottom edge. So it'll match the top edge because all stitches look like this when they're completed. I would recommend this if you're not going to work um, a border around your work or, or cover this edge up in some way by joining it. But it also makes it easier to join if you have this edge. So anyhow, today we're going to work into this back loop, the top loop when you're holding it, but it's the back loop, okay? So we're gonna start with a slip stitch today. But also, if you did the whole skein of yarn um, in a chain, then you can undo it, which is frog. They call it frog because you're ripping the stitches. Rip it, rip it. So it's, a, a, it's frogging when you have to go back and take out stitches you've already done. So let's start with, I'm gonna do the, um, I'm gonna do the slip knot onto my, onto my um, hook here. And then I'm gonna do 16 stitches for, I'm sorry, chains. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. So now I've got sixteen stitches. I'm going to leave this stitch here as my turning chain, as they call it, and I'm going to insert my hook into this loop here, and I'm going to pull the string through this loop and the loop on my hook. My yarn split right there. That is a slip stitch. So insert hook in, pull yarn over, yarn over, and then pull through the loop on your hook. So insert into the next stitch Yarn over, pull through both loops. So insert in the stitch. You got two loops there. So you're gonna yarn over through both of them. This is a slip stitch. A lot of times when you are joining um, in circle rounds, you use a slip stitch. There are several patterns out there that you can use that show this slip stitch. So again, you're going to insert into that back loop. You're gonna yarn over, pull through, then pull through the, the loop on the hook. This is a slip stitch. So let's see what that looks like. It's very tight, close stitches. When we get to the bottom of this, we are going to have a turning chain of one. 
and then we can go back across. Okay, so we're at the end of that. That's the last stitch. I'm gonna do one turning. Then I'm gonna turn my work this way. And then if I'm gonna slip stitch into it, I'm going to slip stitch into that back loop of that stitch, which is right there. Oh, it's kind of difficult. I don't use the slip stitch like this very often. There, and then into this back loop Yarn over and pull through both. So anyhow, you get it. There is the slip stitch right there. Now, I'm gonna undo this all the way back to my original chains, original chain, and I'm gonna count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and there's 15, so I undid an extra. There's 16. So I'm gonna have 15 single crochets at the end of this. So my 16th is my turning chain. I'm going to insert my hook into the back loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over again, and pull through both loops. So again, I'm going to insert my hook into the back loop, yarn over, pull through the loop, Yarn over again and pull through both loops. Insert the hook into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Insert into the next chain. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both loops. Insert into the next one. Yarn over, pull through, Yarn over, pull through both loops. Yarn, oh, I mean, into the next chain. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through. Into the next chain. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Insert into the next chain. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Insert into the next chain. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops. Insert into the next chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops. Keep doing that until you get to the end. And you're going to have done your first row of single crochets. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops. All right, the last one, you ready? Insert into the last stitch. Uh-oh. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops. So there's your single crochet. Now, we're going to go ahead and chain one, turn it over. Now here is the tricky part. Some new crocheters will just grab this loop here. But that would be wrong. That's gonna give you a ridge across your work. The way that you do most all stitches, unless it says single crochet in the front loop, which would be right here, or a single crochet in the back loop, then you single crochet into both loops. That's how you go through a full stitch. So I'm going to have my chain one. I'm gonna go through both those loops. I'm gonna yarn over, pull through, and then I'm gonna yarn over and pull through both loops. And then go to the next stitch and make sure that you're getting that both V's, the whole V, both sides. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. And do it again. Get through both those, those loops. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both loops. Now again, into the hook, I mean the stitch, Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Now, insert into the hook, 
I mean, in, <laughs> insert into the stitch both loops, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both loops. Now let's do that till the end. So insert into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, pull through both loops. Insert into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both loops. All the way to the end. Now, I'm, I'm holding my yarn, but not too tight. I'm, I'm hanging on to my hook, kind of, you know, um, loosely. Um, I'm holding on to my work. Probably the hard, the strongest um, thing I am doing is hanging on to that work. I don't want that work to slip out of my fingers, but I'm not fighting or, or pulling tight or anything like that. I'm just, it's all naturally working with each other. There's no tug of war happening. I am losing my hook. Okay, so yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both loops. Now I'm coming up to the end. And one of the number one things that crochet beginning crocheters have a problem um, is they'll, they'll get through with their work and they will not have good edges. Their edges will be like their work, they'll get longer and longer and longer or shorter and shorter. So instead of having a straight line for their work, it kind of, it kind of goes in and out. Like on this work here, see, it's a straight line. But if you're like coming in this way and that way, then it's because you don't have enough stitches. So right here, you started off with 16 and your turning chain was one. So that left you with 15 stitches. So count the V's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I have enough V's on my, um, my, um, on my chain. Something else you can do is use a stitch marker to mark that um, beginning stitch. So right here, I'm at the end of my row. I can chain and then do my next one, insert into that V, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both loops, and then slide that stitch marker into that V and clip it. Now you know when you get to that one you've done your last one. And so you just keep going. So insert in both loops, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both loops. Go all the way to the end. Now on this one, this is your last to be here, so you can have a stitch marker there. And if you do, then you should be able to keep up with your work and you won't have to worry about counting your stitches. Now, I always count my stitches if I can so that I know that I have enough stitches. Um, if I use the stitch markers, I'm not going to count every row, but every so many rows I will still count because there's nothing worse than getting halfway through a blanket and having to frog out you know, 15 rows because you got one too many or two too little stitches. And it's easy to do, especially when you use a bigger stitch like a double crochet. So just keep that in mind. And until you really get it down, just go ahead and mark those, that ending stitch. And I was looking for my stitch markers. Uh-oh. And I don't have them um, right off hand. So, but you get what I mean. Put one there in that ending stitch once you turn around, and then you'll have one on this end. Now, today, I want you to do as many chains as you want to. Um, you could make a pot holder. You could make a um, washcloth. You could make, or a dish rag. You could make a blanket. If you want to do 100 crochets and, and do single crochets in each one, for a blanket, then just make sure that blanket's as wide as you would like, and then just do your crochet stitches, 
and tomorrow or the next day I'll upload a video about double crochets and so you can do double you can do single crochets and then you can do the next few rows or the next skein of yarn can be double crochets and then you can do half double crochets so that'll be the next lesson is half double crochets and double crochets but for now continue to practice this um single crochet if you would like and also practice that slip stitch but this one is the one I really want you to master now. So anyways, um, we've, we went over the yarn over, we went over the chain, um, we went over the slip stitch, and we went over the single crochet. Um, and keep in mind too that when you start like a blanket, that each hook that you use, each brand of hook and each type of hook, they all have different types. See, this one's more pointed and these are more rounded. And this one's got a really sharp hook. I don't know if y'all can see that. Let me see this one's got a really sharp hook here and then these don't have as sharp a hook but each brand of hook and each size of hook matters when you're working on a project if you switch hooks in the middle of your project then your stitches aren't going to be uniform okay so keep that in mind so grab the yarn that you're going to use and grab that hook and finish that blanket um you know with the same same uh hook and um so for now, um, I would like um, to uh, help y'all with your next step. Um, I hope that this was useful. Um, please subscribe to my channel and like my video and maybe throw me a comment. Let me know what I could do better. Let me know what you'd like to see. Um, let me know if I'm moving too slow or if I'm moving too fast. Um, but I really do... Um, you know, want to help y'all with the next step. So come back and, and visit me on the uh, double crochet, which I'll upload tomorrow or the next day. All right. Thank you guys.